Just after New Year in 2010, I went down to Kent in the UK to visit the English harp guitar maker Stephen Sedgwick. Stephen is rapidly gaining a reputation around the world for being a fine harp guitar maker. So I went down to talk to Stephen to find out why he does what he does. So here we are in the workshop of Stephen Sedgwick in, where are we, in Longfield in Kent? Yes, yeah. near uh, Brands Hatch, okay. just, just over there. A bit cold now, isn't it? It is a, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a bit... We're not smoking, it's just... <laughs> it's, it's a bit cold today. Yeah. Stephen, can you tell us um, what made you first want to be a, um, first a guitar maker and then of course later on a hard guitar maker? What was your first... Can you remember what, how old were you, you were when you first decided that? Uh, at 14 I started playing guitar. Mm -hmm. And then I knew I wanted to do something with music. I didn't yeah. know what. Mm. And fortunately, at school, we had to fill out one of these forms, mm. whether you want to work indoors and outdoors mm. and, and things like that. And he actually came back as an uh, instrument maker. That's amazing. And yes, because most people, they got uh, like a rocket scientist or a train driver. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, and then I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Mm. And it was just a matter of looking up wh where to do to do this. Mm. And fortunately, there was a course in London. Yeah. And so uh, I went there. Yeah. And so first you were, you know, like a guitar maker, or you, you were studying to be a luthier. But then what first got your attention to the harp guitar? Can you remember the first contact you had with it, whether it was a photograph or was it a story? Or... It, my best memory is of, of a photograph, and it's of an 11 string uh, Torres. Mm. And it was from a, um, a book about his life that was written by Jose Roman Milos. Okay. And what was it that fascinated you most? Do you remember? I don't know. I think um, it's just as soon as you see it, you know. Mm -hmm. And it was just something it jumped out. It was interesting. It was different. I've always liked the, the unusual, something different. What, why do you think there's a um, seemingly a sudden and growing interest in hard guitar, apart from the, the intrigue of YouTube and, and the videos on there, because the instrument looks unusual? Why do you think guitar players are um, really keen to go over to the hard guitar, like myself and other people? Uh, originally, like in the, the, the old days, one reason for having the extra strings was to increase the range of the instrument. Right, yeah. And so some, some music, musicians felt limited to, with six strings or what the guitar could do, although there's, mm. there's plenty that can be done. How do you see the instrument developing now from the sort of sub bass and super trebles? What, what else could be possible, do you think? Um, it's something in fact you're, you're dealing with mm. or t t dabbling with, yeah. and that's with MIDI. I mean, it's already about, mm, mm. but it's a matter of getting it financially more available. Sure. Uh, the technology is improving. Yeah. But what you're getting is, uh, like a 21-string harp guitar, you can have five full octaves. Mm. And so you could, um, with the MIDI, you could change the sound of it mm. to a different instrument. Mm. So not only do you have a traditional... Mm instrument guitar yeah you could have different banks as different instruments i think pat Matheny does mm. things like that mm. so instead of uh, so it's like a, a keyboard for stringed players right yeah. i think that's where it's going to go yeah myself do you love what you do i do i mean uh, i am i'm here as much as i can be to do mm. it but obviously there's the uh writing emails and all that sort yeah, of, of course, stuff. Yeah, of course, we'll never know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But no, I do, I do love what I do. And it's, every instrument is different, so no two are the same. Yeah. And, and every piece of wood is, is different, and you have to mm. uh, treat them individually. Mm. Stuff, yeah. It's... It must be amazing when, when a, if a player comes to your workshop who's ordered a guitar and they play the guitar for the first time. It must be quite scary. Is it a bit... Is it, it is. Are you nervous about that? Fortunately, most of my uh, customers have played one of my instruments before, okay. so they kind of know what they're getting. Mm. Uh, but there's a few that have uh, haven't played, and mm. and uh, through trust, mm. yeah, and um, and they've all been happy so far. Touch wood, <laughs> they've been happy. I'm not surprised, but yeah. And um, but no, it is. It's also beautiful when the, the instrument actually starts being heard to be played and. Mm. The music comes out of it, mm, mm. and the music, musician starts finding new things. Mm -hmm. I mean, what did you feel when you started playing? What, did, what, what happened? Well, I remember when I first came in, I sat in this very chair, in fact, in that very place, and played the, the harp guitar that I got from you. And um, 
I remember pl spending the first 20 minutes or so just playing the guitar part and then just trying to find the corresponding bass notes. And after seeing the Michael Hedges video, uh, because it's there, and that possibility with the bass, which I think most, most, most guitar players who come to the harp guitar have come for that video or other yes. videos, yeah, Michael Hedges. Um, I think uh, I automatically knew when I first saw that DVD in France, I thought, I've been looking for this extra bass for a long time. I was tuning my classical guitar down to A God. quite often. Yeah. And that's ridiculous for a classical guitar. I mean, it worked with new, with new strings, but it was never reliable. And the, and the tuning would always creep up, but it was always a bit unpredictable. But when it worked, it was great. But now I have this extra six bass strings, which suddenly m makes sense completely. And I, and I started by playing the piano when I was younger, not the guitar. So I'm used to this more right. of a range. So suddenly it must just completely normal to have those extra basses. And also to now have the trebles, which I'm going to have soon. And, and then whatever else I can get in one instrument would <laughs> <laughs> be great. You know? Yeah. 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 Uh, Stephen, what factors um, are more specific to the harp guitar than the normal guitar as a guitar maker? Um, the main difference really is the tension mm -hmm. in the instrument. And with the, uh, the bridge being much wider, mm -hmm. that can affect the, uh, the balance of the instrument. And sometimes, often, with, the, with such a wide bridge, you've got the bass connecting, is that the E and the A can be a bit weaker mm -hmm. than compared to a normal guitar. Yeah. I mean, some, some guitars, I, harp guitars I've played, and the E is almost dead. Uh, and so, with the 12 string guitar, all the tension is focused up the neck. Mm -hmm. But with the harp guitar, the extra bass is. Um, the whole tension spread out, mm -hmm. so it's not it's not so bad. But you still need to to uh, strengthen the, the soundboard. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that is most popular is the arm section, mm -hmm. and it's I mean you can make another like a mandolin out of the amount of material there is. Mm -hmm. What should one look for when looking for a harp guitar for the first time? One thing to consider is perhaps location, but yeah, if you can. Uh, meet the maker and see his instruments. Mm. That's always important. Mm. So you get a, you can tell the quality and all the rest of it. Mm. And also, um, hopefully, they can provide a, a clientele. Mm. People you can go and see or hear. Mm. If there's recordings of the instrument mm. stuff. Mm. Uh, but also, yeah, if if you can, it is to try and find one and try one before before you buy one. Mm. It's, it, if you can, yeah, it's not easy. There's the old uh, Schrammel harp guitars or contra guitars, which mm. are like a classical with nylon bases. Yeah, and it's getting that technique down of playing an independent thumb. Mm. I see that on eBay. There's often these really cheap and bad quality Chinese guitars, which are quite expensive now. And uh, I guess we should look out for those, shouldn't we? Yes, I mean uh, I've had uh, on eBay someone stolen a picture of my instrument. Mm. And they put it up there, saying we make these. And it's happened to quite a few makers, and, and that's one thing you've got to be careful of. Of, of the eBay uh... Well, mate, thanks for the chat, and that's um, right. we'll uh, go and uh, look around your your area where you work and uh, film a bit of you doing stuff with the guitars. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Let's go to the pub, but we would all come to the pub. <laughs> nice uh, beer or two in the afternoon.